Tisztelt Hölgyeim és Uraim, elnézős a kis technikai problémáért, de akkor ezen el elkezdem az előadást. Föld alatti gáztárolók és az energia, gázellátási biztonságról fogok beszélni. És ugye talán úgy kezdhetnénk az egészet, hogy ki tudja, hogy milyen lesz a idei tél, a következő tél, hány hideg nap lesz, milyen hosszan lesznek hideg napok, lesz-e megint ukrán-orosz gázvita, ki fog ez a a gázellátásunkra, a Magyarországra beérkező gázmennyiségekre. Ugye ezt nem tudjuk előre megmondani, de nekünk mégis tartozunk azzal a felelősséggel, hogy fölkészüljünk az ilyen és hasonló jellegű problémákra. Mai előadásomban ezzel a gázellátási kérdéssel, gázellátás biztonsági kérdéskörrel fogok foglalkozni, de annak kizárólag a föld alatti gáztárolókkal kapcsolatos kérdéseivel. Ha megnézzük a If we look at the V4 countries' um, natural gas consumption in primary electricity production, then we can see that there is a great discrepancy or difference between the countries. Hungary produce, uh, utilizes less than 40 percent, whereas Poland has a ratio under 15 percent right now. If you look at the framework uh, beyond the V4, the other countries in the region, then we see these differences as well. In some countries, there's a greater ratio of natural gas in primary energy generation. This gas is used for communal consumption and also industrial consumption in order to generate electricity or the chemical industry. When we're talking about security supply, we have to talk about it because there might be a blackout, for example. Uh, we might lack of uh, natural gas and uh, we also might have some extreme weather conditions when there are problems uh, for consumers. There might be technical conditions or circumstances or political problems, which uh, uh, there are also gas debates every year almost. So it might also happen that the, the behavior or a, approach of a stakeholder in this market is changing. So this all might influence the security of supply. And uh, this means that we need uh, reserves of gas to meet the demands. Uh, and we have to help out in those situations when there is blackout of supply. I am taking care of the short term uh, projects because these are related to underground uh, gas reservoirs but what is an important progress that in 2010 there is a regulation EU regulation of uh, 19, uh, number 1994 which defines directions for countries and regions uh, to uh, reach in the future to reach uh, energy supply security. So the V4 countries and the whole region is an important uh, import dependent region in the perspective of natural gas and we also have a primary uh, gas potentials and of course also underground gas reservoirs which can serve as a resource in case of crisis. There are other unimportant sources, however, I shall not go into these details. What is typical about the gas consumption in a country is that uh, we have a lower consumption in the summer where we import gas in order to um, fill the reservoirs for the winter. And we also uh, do the overhauls in these uh, periods and do not peak the uh, system in order to be able to do that in the winter. However, in the winter, uh, production uh, reaches its peak, the gas reservoirs try to meet the demands, and the import is 
Well, as it is, this depends on many uh, factors, external factors as well. There are certain surprises that may occur, and we try to prepare for that. <coughs> Maybe not everyone knows how an underground gas reservoir works. If there are many, if there's an abundance in gas, then they are, uh, this gas is then uh, put into the reservoir and exploited when there's a demand. The most important questions is uh, how much gas we can store. This is the mobile gas reservoir. Um, and the question is how much we can uh, take out. This is the exploitation peak capaci capacity. And the cycle is how much time it takes to switch from one um, function to the other. And the reservoirs have a certain limit how often we can do this uh, change in function. There are three types of gas reservoirs uh, in our regions. The typical ones are the old petroleum and uh, gas fields where the gas is then resubmitted. Here we can um, store the greatest amount. However, they are very slow, they're inflexible, and it's very difficult to switch in functions. They have a one-year uh, flexibility, so we can um, feed in gas in the summer and exploit in the winter. However, there are caverns which are of greater flexibility but can only store a, a smaller amount. And it, exploitation is also uh, faster. And the third, more scarce but also possible reservoir is underground water uh, reservoirs, which are aquifers, which are very similar to the um, petroleum and gas fields. <coughs> At the same time, uh, natural gas is about everything uh, such as uh, technical and trade aspects. We have a trade type uh, and strategic reservoirs. The commercial reservoirs are about business. This is just a business like everything else. It has to generate profit. Uh, the question how much gas we can um, store in the certain reservoir depends on the demand, uh, how much um, gas has to be stored by the, those renting the reservoirs. In consequence, it can happen, and it happens often, that a, an underground reservoir is not peaked before winter, but based on certain economic considerations and decisions, the companies only store a um, certain amount. Strategic reservoirs are a new category. These have been created because of um, supply security reasons. And in order to balance out the demand and the supply, in case of any incidents, this balance can be restored. These underground gas reservoirs are not uh, isolated systems, but much rather in, they are operated in cooperation with the gas transmitting and distributing systems. The next figure shows us a lot of data. I will not go into detail, but it shows us that in the V4 countries in the red frame, the V4 countries, what kind of capacities these underground reservoirs have, what kind of peak capacity they have, and we can draw the conclusion that the V4 countries are pretty well endowed in this uh, respect. Hungary, the Czech Republic, and Slovakia is uh, um, excelling in gas reservoirs as from the aspect of gas reservoirs because these countries are able to 
retrieve enough gas from their own reservoirs and their peak daily peak capacity 70% to 100% of their peak capacity can be satisfied from these um, reservoirs through the distribution system. In Poland, we have a more meager capacity. However, Polish uh, consumption of, of natural gas is pretty low. It's around 15%. So the sensitivity of this country is very diff different. Uh, as opposed to Hungary, which consumes 35 percent in natural gas. It is also apparent from the numbers that from the V4 countries, only Austria has better parameters. All other countries show much worse parameters. But this also shows the possibility of regional cooperation between the V4 countries with the other countries to enhance international cooperation and by this enhance uh, natural gas uh, supply security. Hungary is pioneering in strategic gas reservoirs. This is the first uh, country to adopt a law on strategic uh, gas reservoirs. Two laws, two le pieces of legislation made this possible, and as a result, from the 1st of July 2012, 100 million uh, cubic meters of gas can be stored uh, in uh, uh, these reservoirs, and can sub uh, and we can exploit 20 million cubic meters per day. Uh, from these in peak times. So we are pioneering not only in v the V4 region, but also in the whole of Europe in this respect. <laughs> now let's look at the data from Hungary from the aspect of understanding uh, supply security better. What is the effect of these uh, things? Hungary utilizes 55 million cub cubic meters per day, meaning that this is the amount that actually is consumed in Hungary. In case of peak, um, peak load, we even reach 10 million cubic meters in one day. And as a consequence of the developments recently conducted, we can um, rely on 52 cu cubic meters per day if it, the reservoir is filled, and 20 million cubic meters can be guaranteed daily through this reservoir. But here we also have risks because supply security is a reaction to risk. We have to take into account the climate, um, the demand of the consumers, the question of imports, whether or not we have any decrease. And this is not a, something very uh, out of the ordinary because it happened quite often in the last few years. And of course, we have extreme climate uh, incidents. And the question of commercial interests of the companies, whether or not they will fill their reservoirs. And when the critical incident occurs in the line of the exploitation uh, period of the, the reservoirs, because the exploitation starts around January and February, and the incidents occurring then will um, have a great effect on the possibilities of exploitation. Let's look at the effects on this diagram. We can see uh, with this small dotted range that within the last 10 years, Hungary's peak uh, load demand was um, in within this uh, region. On the worst dates, Hungary's peak um, demand was between 74 to 90 cubic meters. 
The first pillar shows us what happens if everything is fine. We have much more gas than what we really need. So we have import gas, we produce gas, and we have gas in the reservoirs, and we don't really need the strategic gas reservoirs. The second pillar shows us what happens if the Ukrainian tap is turned off. Russian import is gone on totally, and all import possibilities are declined. The question of uh, how much um, gas we can import from Ga Baumgarten, from Austria, because that is also Russian gas. And then we can include the strategic re uh, reservoirs, and we can probably satisfy the demand. And then the next scenarios when we don't have enough import, where we don't have enough uh, domestic production, and the gas reservoirs are more or less strained. And we can see that with the strategic uh, reservoirs, Hungary has a much better a more enhanced security of supply. This is my, uh, actually the conclusion of my uh, presentation today. And what are our tasks for the next period? Obviously, the European Union has already uh, shown its intent to enhance the security of natural gas supply uh, at best on the regional level and not on the country level or member state level. Another conclusion is that the V4 countries and the neighboring countries um, have to cooperate because there's a great difference in their uh, gas uh, reservoir capacities. This actually leads us to conclude that we need a regional cooperation um, in this respect in order to enhance supply security. In case we have adequate transmission line connections, then the integrated countries can cooperate in this respect. And these interconnector transmission lines, the northern and southern uh, corridor, uh, will be touched upon by the next speaker, so I will not go into detail. And because I have not really stressed the sh the long-term supply security of natural gas, I would like to highlight that we also have to enhance the supply security on the long run. And actually, this poses very different issues than the ones that we have been talking about until now. And gas reservoirs would only have a minimal role in this.